Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundforks. This is episode 51 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And after our last episode, which uncovered lots and lots of useful science around Moho, it's time to actually um, play it a little bit closer to home. And um, in this episode we will be taking... Uh, starting to actually make a small orbital station around Minmus. Uh, I want the Minmus to be proving ground for our orbital stations and also for our future colonization missions where we will be actually make, taking the modular colonization system modules and placing them on various planets. So, uh, to do so we need the proving ground. And what better proving ground than Minmus? It's close to home and it is ideal, low, cur low gravity, gives us a chance to actually do lots and lots of useful experiments. So, without further ado, I'm actually taking a small orbital refuel station and uh, the one that we used to actually create the currently uh, Kerbin Orbital Lab 1. But I'm refactoring it because we don't need that big of a communication dishes, which we needed to destroy anyway, because they were colliding with the um, Gigantor solar panels. And I'm just adding two small antennas that would be able to communic maintain communication with Kerbin. Then uh, we want to do some more small modifications and uh, let's see, I want to be putting also one some more batteries because we only have two batteries and if one of them fails there we're basically um, in trouble. So, and then it hasn't been exactly kind to us lately because it's constantly giving us headache. I mean, I wanted it, but uh, it's uh, additional level of challenge, especially with unmanned probe design. So that's why we have to go a little bit more focus put on redundancy. So I'm actually now uh, moving our communitron, and actually I'm thinking I would actually prefer to put on top the Kerbal attachment system containers with some spares in case something goes wrong that we can still come here and actually repair stuff. So let's just add the first the two RTGs. We'll have Gigantors providing most of the solar energy but when we are in darkness mode we still want some amount of power. So yes, let's use the RTGs instead. And then we have the Kerbal attachment system uh, placeholder. So let's move our antenna here. And in that container we want to be putting various things that we will actually need. So first what I typically like to put as first is the pipe endpoint because for refueling reasons. And then we want to put some struts if we ever need to restrut something. And then we put the RTG in case one of them goes away, <coughs> or two of them. Because they can replace the solar panels even if they cannot break, so they're kind of useful. Not much things, but still. Let's put on back the SAS unit. And... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that should more or less be it, except that we need a little bit more maybe Delta V or stuff. Now, that being said, okay, we roll out the orbital refuel station and let us launch it. Okay, and throttle to max and blast off. And yeah, it is so nice and rewarding to actually for once play <laughs> with 17 frames per second onwards. I've almost forgotten how it feels given the monstrosities I've been launching recently. And my flight engineer works, which is just beautiful. Okay, first set of boosters, separation successful. Second set of booster separation successful, and our thrust to weight is a little bit on the lower side. 
150, but then again, enough. So, burning for the apoapsis until we get to 100, and then we'll just go for the circularization. Standard launch profile, nothing really special here. Popping the fairings, and I noticed that I have put the parachutes in the wrong stage. Well, parachutes are for the ascent stage, and this one we will actually not return to Kerbin because we need every ounce of that Delta V. So I don't think that these parachutes will deploy, like ever. So burning for the circularization. <coughs> Let's make sure that that is put in place. Yeah, we are in space, but still not orbital. Which we will be shortly. Okay, minus 200 meters periapsis, and come on, and there we go. Well, 100 by 79, not my proudest achievement, but then again, I don't care. Uh, let's put extend the solar panels, not that we are like that critical, but then putting and extending our communication dishes, it always pays dividends if you prepare for that immediately. Basically, I have, uh, when I was playing and doing my um, remote tech series, on more than one occasion I have sent the craft to go like on an interplanetary mission without actually extending anything else than my communitron. And that's how I lost a couple of very good probes. So yeah, nowadays I typically extend or activate the communication dishes while I'm just basically in the orbit. So, uh, fixing the inclination before we go to uh, Minmus. Getting ready to execute the plan maneuver and I'm actually, as you can see, I'm letting my flight computer do the work for me because this is a robotic launch and it should be treated as such. We really don't need to fly that guy manually doesn't make sense. The whole purpose is to get the topmost part, the first part of our orbital station to Minmus. So now trying to find the proper place where to burn for the transfer to Minmus and as you can see my maneuver node is playing tricks on me so I'm just kind of trying to get a Minmus encounter and here we go. Okay and then playing a little bit with the maneuver node back and forth and actually I want to my ships to be orbiting in the same direction so I'll put it from this size and then I realize oh wait I have already a craft in Minmus orbit so then I remember that it was our popular design RCS lander so we could actually go and end up somewhere around this guy and maybe even talk with it I didn't plan it when I was designing the ship, but I, I'm thinking it might be actually a cool idea. Because then we could basically refuel this guy, we do have RCS here, and then for future <laughs> use we could actually reuse it when necessary. I think it would be cool. So, without further ado, let us add another maneuver node. And as we burn to Minmus, we basically mm, ended up here. But I now want to fix my my approach to Minmus, so I'm just fiddling a little bit with the maneuver node. And I think this should bring it to a very nice orbit. Okay. Now let's see, extending our communication dishes. And transferring slowly to Minmus. Are also Visual window is approaching, so we have to make sure that we are paying attention to it. But then again, mm -hmm. 
Okay, here we go, and I think our approach should be very close to what we're supposed to go, so let's see. And we're coming ever so carefully, and come on, change the sphere of influence, please. Any moment, yeah. Here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> with this one being prepared, I just want to adjust our um, orbit so that we match up with our uh, small exploration lander uh, and then basically to rendezvous with it. I think it will be kind of cool. So 129 meters per second, which is like really minuscule. Uh, but then again, that's another reason why I actually like Minmus. It's super easy to actually get into orbit and perform orb orbital maneuvers. That's why Minmus is an ideal proving ground for more complex missions. Okay. Orienting ourselves maneuver prograde. And executing the plan maneuver. And here you can see the two flags that we planted, two of our landing sites that we visited using our exploration lander. I'm so happy that I didn't delete the flags <coughs> when I had the chance to. You got that feeling, you know, you know, like we've been there. So, yeah. Kudos to us. So, burning ever so carefully to make sure that we get a nice, decent orbit and a decent capture. And here we go. And now we have highly elliptical orbit, which I didn't want to expand too much delta V, but then I, again I wanted to make sure that I fix the inclination and everything to be able to rendezvous with our Minmus lander. So, yeah. That's kind of the plan anyway. Okay, and I think we will be rendezvousing pretty nicely here by only spending the 20 meters per second. So let us execute the plan maneuver. In which will be coming in five minutes for three, two. Yes, thank you, uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, going one circle around Minmus, and just trying to fiddle a little bit, uh, getting what more accurate. And yeah, here we go. Setting up the close encounter. And our curb into jewel window is coming dangerously close, so I think I'm just gonna go dock this guy, and then we'll have to go and launch our dual exploration ship, I think. So, yeah. We need to be quick and efficient on this. Um, yeah. Okay. 4.1 kilometers away. Pretty close, if you ask me. Two and a half, 2.3. To put two kilometers entering the physics warp, and now we are just aligning our yellow and our our mm, orbit target marker to the marker of the exploration lander as we are as we are closing in on it. Oops, I think I overdid it, so I have to go back with um, RCS. Fortunately enough, we have enough more than enough RCS. Okay, fixing our target velocity to zero, and then we will be actually performing the docking maneuver. So let us control from here, and then let us go and proceed to dock with our 
exploration lander. Perfect. Everything's going smoothly so far. Okay, using RCS we're gonna burn towards our exploration lander which we will dock with and hopefully refuel it. So far pretty smooth sailing, easy mission mm, and with an added bonus of reusing an old and well-known ship. Yeah. So, 90 meters. Hey, hello there. It's been a while since we left this <laughs> this guy stranded here. And it is with about time that we only reuse it. So, set as a target and yeah, control from here. I guess and let us proceed to docking. Uh, yes. <clears throat> it seems that the capsule uh, itself has go undergone some fault, but uh, once we actually get uh, one of our kerbals here, we would be able to repair it. So, let us control and let us bump this one. So, or <laughs> rendezvous with it. I'm just now trying to find the correct alignment and then we'll be just doing the transfer. I'm not sure if this ship is 100% stable rotation wise, but I think it is, so I think it will be good enough. So, aligning it and yeah, we're in the ballpark, so let us go and perform the docking maneuver. Nineteen, eighteen meters, <coughs> and as I'm looking at this clamp patron docking port, I notice a design flaw which I have made. But um, this is I noticed this in post production. Now when I'm recording the audio, which uh, at the time when I was recording I wasn't aware of. I'll give you guys a second if you can figure out what 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 did I do wrong. Okay, so 13 meters and let us go and dock. So 12, like 4 meters, 3 meters on the sea distant and I'm hoping it should engage anytime. Oop, 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 correct it a little bit. Yeah, up and come on, come on. By now we should already see the magnetism between the docking ports, but then again fixing and slowly and and bump and yes so the fault is that I'm trying to connect communitron uh, port against the communitron docking port junior so two docking ports that are completely incompatible and trying to dock against each other. And yeah, screenshot. So basically when I figure out <coughs> that when I was playing that pretty much sent me on a rampage. And I decided that I could have thought about sending a Kerbal to connect these two, but I really couldn't be bothered. So, rather than that, I have decided to use, find another use for this <coughs> orbital station part. Mm, by the way, this was a little bit, yeah, <coughs> found, um, I felt a little bit, how would you say, rage. Let's call it rage, yeah. So, I have decided to actually put this in a slightly different type of orbit burnt it a little bit 
and sending it back to Minmus. Well, not back, sending it to Minmus. And then I realized I still have some Delta V in this beautiful stage, which, uh, which I should use, mm, let's say, as a missile. So, um, this is something that we haven't yet seen, so... But then again, I was really angry when I had this docking didn't go as planned, so I decided, let's see what happens if we try to perform a high-speed docking, let's say at 24 or more per meters per second. It was more like 50. You get a little bit nice cloud of space confetti. Yes, what can I say? I need to work on my anger management skills. But then again, Minmus got a nice meteor or debris shower. Okay, so we will need to resend that guy back. But uh, since our curb into jewel window is coming very, very close, what we actually need to be launching is the other jewel exploration ship, the science one. Um, yeah, or. Yeah, the other, I think, jewel exploration ship. But let's first queue this one for building. And before I forget, let's immediately kit it with the jo docking port junior. Thank you very much. Okay. Build and build. Yes, thank you. Okay. That being said, let us just clean up some debris after what we have actually done. And... Okay. And then we come up to our... Uh, let's see, orbital station, yeah. And we come to two hours of our transfer window, which means it is time for our com or science, let's take that one, it's much heftier, to do its transfer burn. Okay. We have all the data that we need to have. Yeah, we have all the data we need to have, and <coughs> we need to just input that, and we immediately get the periapsis around Joule. So, yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, hmm. Sure. Fixing the periapsis. And we have a nice jewel encounter, so let's stick with that and just 14 minutes burn. That means 7 minutes before, 7 minutes after. And I'm actually thinking that I'll just use the flight computer to keep our craft pointed note maneuver prograde while we execute the transfer burn. So, okay. By the way, I do apologize a little bit for the background noise, but yeah, what can you do? So, uh, aligning 2000 meters per second to burn. And uh, yeah. And burning first with our rhino, and uh, I was trying to guesstimate and then completing the burn on our nuke engines. By the way, it's a total of 8 nukes, so 2, 4 nuke clusters. Which ga give us this very nice 6000 Delta V. So, as and as I'm doing that, I'm expanding my communication dish, and actually I need to be expanding the long-range ones. The medium-range, I forgot that it is supposed to be used for the planets. So, now expanding the big communication dishes, and... Mm, as we are burning ever so slowly, 
it takes a while until like, we actually reach the desired dual periapsis. So, screenshot. <clears throat> okay, and uh, yeah, 1,500 uh, more to burn. Mm, maybe we should do it a little bit time accelerated, but uh, yeah see how it goes and by the way guys once again this is a little bit I think four times times acceleration by the game followed by uh, I think seven times times acceleration by my video editing otherwise it goes painfully 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 slow it will go better once we reduce the part count when we start deploying our probes but then again what can you do so, once again, screenshot with some lights, hopefully looks better, <coughs> okay. We are midway towards our burn, still holding maneuver prograde, we have ejected from the Kerbin and we are now trying to get a good apoapsis around Joule. So, expanding our apoapsis toward Joule and let's see if we get a nice clean transfer and I think guys I will be cutting the video as soon as we basically reach um, Joule or not reach Joule but uh, achieve the correct transfer so because it, we're closing in on the 30 minute mark so that should be like a max length for the episode I don't want to go much further than that so yeah okay and and here we go excellent well looks good enough I am um, it's just KSP being silly but anyway there we go um, thank you very much for this episode like if you like the episode and hit subscribe for more KSC content that should be coming soon uh, thank you again for watching this is Grumforks signing off <laughs>